గాడ్ మ్యాన్ ఎస్ అన్మార్క బుక్ ఎక్స్ప్లనేటరీ బుక్ రిటర్న్ బై స్వామి శరవణానంద చాప్టర్ ఫోర్ నో మ్యాన్ బట్ గాడ్ ఇన్ ది ఎండ్ ఆఫ్ ది లాస్ట్ చాప్టర్ వి ఆర్ మేడ్ నోన్ దట్ అవర్ లార్డ్ అలోన్ హ్యాస్ అజ్యూమ్డ్ ది హోల్ బీయింగ్ ఆఫ్ అవర్ సెల్ఫ్స్ ఆల్ ది సోల్ లైఫ్ అండ్ బాడీ ఆర్ ది అవుట్కమ్ ఆఫ్ దట్ డివైన్ ఫోర్స్ ఎక్స్టెండెడ్ ఫ్రమ్ హిమ్సెల్ఫ్ దట్ డివైన్ ఫోర్స్ బై హిస్ ఆమ్ని గ్రీస్ హెస్ ట్రాన్స్ఫార్మ్డ్ ఇన్ టు ఆల్ అవర్ సెల్ఫ్స్ దీస్ ఆర్ ది మెటీరియల్ బాడీస్ వీ ప్రాసెస్ ది వైటల్ ఎనర్జీ ఆఫ్ లైఫ్ వీ బ్రీత్ ది నాలెడ్జ్ ఆఫ్ సోల్ వీ గెట్ బై ఆల్ దీస్ we do live in the life it is clear that all are his omni forms alone there is nothing except him and his so where are we and ours are we either a bodily being or a being of vital air or a soul atom alone we are nothing of these when each is taken separately and none of these can live upon the earth to taste the divine bliss we are here in this bodily life in the form of divine spirit of gracious knowledge therefore this spirit of divine knowledge is the form of both his and ours so we are none other than himself to this the heading is referred as no man but god yes god himself has become the man this truth is not comprehensive at the first sight of ordinary people they will be confused to think that god alone has become every man of so many defects in this world if god has become the man how can there be such calamities and unhappy incidents happening everywhere in this world why the man is leading such a wild and inhuman life in the world all these are screening the truth behind the deeds of god god is working from the innermost and his will is to make the man realize the life of eternal bliss before that divine realization the man must understand the inner truth and must turn from the outer sensual pursuits as far as his mind clings to the outer enjoyments he follows the sensuous path that desire of sensuous life for sensual pleasures drives him blindly to seek illegal and wrong pursuits therefore he is often coming across so many difficulties and miseries in such a life of painful experience he gains good sense to avoid the wrong and pick up the right by leading a virtuous life thereafter when he begins to follow the good path of virtuous life he gets some truth working from the inner abode but there comes some trials and tribulations only for making him firm in his steady standing in the righteousness he may be shaken off in the beginning then he can come to steadiness all the trials and difficulties are for the good experiences at last he comes to understand that all his personal likes and dislikes may not be taken into account and he should obey the command of the master he should optimistically accept the divine command and should be performing everything in the spirit of pure love then he will find everything 
in the daily life is all right and nothing is set against him indeed his good works bring him happy fruits of life in this world there will happen no misfortunes and calamities to such a good person because there are happening many worst dangerous calamities in every corner of the world and it is to be understood that the whole of the general population is not leading a true virtuous life the material science has given great momentum to the sensuous life alone moreover the humanity is completely ignorant of the true knowledge of one divine love working through all for the highest upliftment of the world men are divided into different nations sects castes and groups there is found not a single organization to put the whole humanity in one differenceless rank or community owing to these differences there is havoc everywhere this mentality of the humanity is a hideous curse on this world of today without blooming of the divine love from the heart of everyone we cannot expect a peaceful and happy life on this earth there is absolute coordination between god and man but man is unaware of this and thinks and keeps himself aloof if he truly comes to know the his divine position and if he aspires to acquire that divinity for the goodness of the life he must completely change his attitude towards his worldly life in the light of that love divine then he will find a peaceful life embracing him everywhere at all times if such a mankind is developed it is sure to present a blessed life in this world anyhow our lord is working internally to bring out that blessed life to this planet in the near future therefore we are now to take readily his inner command on us and handle the life wisely with the spirit of pure love all the old differences that have arisen out of ignorance and clinging to the sensual life must go at first there should be no hindrance to develop our universal love for the upliftment of this world even the religions must not prevent anybody to work for the highest goodness in this worldly life indeed if the man gets the true knowledge of himself and this omnigrace lord presenting through everybody he can endeavor to lead a good social life with all surrounding him one god has become all and therefore he is really living through every man but the man in sensual stage is thinking of himself other than that god who is keeping aloof in some unknown region either outside or inside of him this stand point of the man of physical being has still now driven him out in pursuit of sensual pleasures or thrashed him inside to be immersed and extinguished in neither of these ways he obtained what he longed for still there are many following those gainless paths and their lives goal is lost in vain now the truth itself is coming out from the innermost therefore man's standpoint is totally changed he acknowledges 
that he is not a physical bodily being alone. In fact, he is a soul being evolved into this human frame. Till now, even a wise philosopher was holding that he had got a divine soul within himself. Or in other words, he thought that he was in possession of a divine soul into his physical body. But from this moment, he is realizing the light of truth and so he is confirming himself as a soul atom, the divine spirit and as the soul form, the material body in and out of him. To the soul atom, both the divine spirit and the material body are only component parts to make the life full. The body is developed around the soul that give, gives out the life energy and when that life force is sucked away by the soul, the body falls down and crumbles. Then again, the life force evolves out by the grace of God and the creation of the body takes place. From this, it is clear that the soul is the perennial source of the life force that evolves and involutes by the command of the indweller, our Lord. And with this evolution and involution of the life force, the soul makes or mars physical body. Therefore, the body is only a temporary parasitical growth which is to be chopped off at the end of each life until the divine grace comes out to make a permanent body of his grace with the blossoming of the soul itself. This divine body of grace is the only object of immortality in this whole universe. This grace infinite is ever active but it is working out from the innermost only. Therefore, it was not known to the world of rational humanity. Though the reasoning mind of man was able to speculate some mystic powers of divine soul, he was not endowed with its complete possession till this day. So, with that fraction of the divine force, the man showed some miracles to the world only to lose all in the end. Now the divine force which is eternally executing all the spiritual, mental, vital, physical and even the material planes of the in and out of us is found to be coming out of that soul atom of divine grace. Therefore, we can find grace nowhere among any of the planes mentioned above. We are insignificant in these planes. The egoic spirit also is a part of that force only. From all these facts, our Lord is the only eternal entity to be acknowledged. The man's I is only the spirit of his expression. There is no man but God in all the universe. Arut Perinjodi, Arut Perinjodi, Tani Perum Karne Arut Perinjodi, Diabur.